Hello and welcome to my shop. My name is Tracy Maxfield and this is Hammerdown Woodworking. Thought we would end this year out with a, just a short video of a shop tour, just to kind of walk around the shop. This building was put up and actually finished the construction on it in November of 2019 and it's been up just a little over a year of course. And thought I'd show you where I'm at now on the setup. Still some things that I wanted to get done in 2020 that I didn't get done so those will get moved to the to-do list of 2021 so let's take a look around now i kind of have the camera set up near the the entrance door of the shop if you've seen the other videos you'll know about where that's at i've got two entrance doors on uh this side of the shop one's a walkthrough door and in the back is a roll-up door which we'll get back there in a few minutes all this up through here the tool wall and everything this is stuff that was taken out of the old shop and my bench top tools such as the band saw, the scroll saw in the, in the, the drill press and sander and that stuff, I don't have it bolted down yet. Uh, I've put them up there so I could use them, but I still haven't determined as to whether or not that is my best place for them just yet. Uh, what is a new addition to the shop is this uh, Permatrack hollow chisel mortiser. Let's take a closer look at that. This is a one half horsepower Permatrack mortise machines model 5132. I am completely unfamiliar with this brand. I got such a good deal on this one that I had no other choice but to buy it. And uh, I have used it several times and it does work good. As of right now, I've taken a couple of C-clamps and just bolted it down. I don't have it bolted down yet, but I've, I've mounted it down with a couple of C-clamps on each side to a workmate uh, workbench, and that works pretty good. Like I said, I have used this a time or two, and it works good. have absolutely no issues with it at all. It's, it adjusts and sets up real well. Uh, Pretty decent machine for what it was and I got such a good deal on it I couldn't could not turn it down so I bought it and what I have used it so far it does work good this is what you'd say I guess the future home of the miter saw station have not got that built yet the radio alarm saw is still setting like it was in the radio or the the miter saw is still setting where it was have been using them, I just absolutely have not had time to get that miter saw station built, so I'm still using the, the burned wheel rollers uh, as a outfeed table, or not an outfeed table, but a, a table to rest my material on when I do cut it down to length. But uh, one of the things, this is one of the things that's gonna come off the 2020 to-do list and move to the 2021, and that's to build a miter saw station and incorporate both these machines end to each end of that and that one of course has a wider cut to cut you know wider boards with than this this is not a sliding compound miter it's just a compound miter saw so that will be beneficial with having this saw and here i have my two table saws this one is dedicated for cross cuts and, and ripping and this old craftsman has my dado stack in it and that comes in real handy as far as uh my workflow not having to change blades in and out all the time uh, and this is my assembly also outfeed table which sits right in front of both of them especially more this one than, than the other one but uh this one it, it catches my sheet goods or anything large that i bring across the table saw and that works out real well and i also assembly stuff right here also as well of course this is the same workbench that i had in the old shop uh has the uh, router table built in the end of it and of course my vise and everything else on the other end it's kind of covered up right now with a project that i'm working on but this is the same bench as i had before and i do want to make some modifications to this sometime or another in the next year or so i'd love to have a cart make a cart that will roll in and out from under the center of it that will uh, house all my chisels and hand saws and things of that of that nature mallets and marking gauges and so on and i have moved my fine dust air filtration system back to the floor i did have it suspended hanging from the rafters right above the assembly table and the, the table saws i do a lot of sanding at the assembly table and i thought having it right above it it would be a good place for it to pick up 
more fine dust, but I have found that right here on the floor beside the assembly table is where it does its best work at. It, it had not kept, it caught some, uh, the filters were dirty, but it take a, took a lot longer to get those filters dirty with it hanging up there than what it does here in the floor. And here's those two table saws and uh, this delta saw does have dust collection hooked up to it. That one does not. This one was, is used very seldom. I would like to see if I can fashion or uh, uh, make some type of shroud for the bottom of that that would catch sawdust and chips and stuff off of it and, and put dust collection to that later on, but that is way down the list of things to do. And of course, something else that is still on the to-do list carrying over from this year into the next is a lumber cart. This right now is where on these saw horses is where I sticker stack my lumber, which fortunately I'm fixing to start a basic woodworking class and the students are going to be using this material, this red oak, not this white, but this red oak uh, to build uh, their project with. So this will disappear in the next, over the next few weeks pretty quickly. But that's my, this is my only option right now for storing my lumber. And this is one of the later additions to the shop. I actually done an unpacking uh, video on this. This is a Grizzly 8 inch bed. Uh, this, the model G0858 planer, or not planer, but joiner. And uh, it, has, it has worked out real, real well. I did have a six inch bench top delta joiner and it gave out on me right in the middle of the project and I had to order this one, so I just went ahead and went with big, bigger is better, evidently. So this, this works out real well. And this is what I'm utilizing right now still for a clamp rack. Uh, I would love to have a mobile clamp uh, cart. That way I could take my clamps to the assembly table where they are most used at. But right now I haven't, I haven't had a chance to get that done, so I'm still utilizing this and it's not real inconvenient, it's just come over here and grab some and take them over here to the assembly table. And also down this wall is my plumbing for the dust collection system. Each tool except for that drill press down this wall has its own dust port and there's one port that goes across over to that delta table saw and that would be it right there but this this is the only side as of right now that does have have dust collection on it and this is my rikon bandsaw uh, i had this in the previous shop it's a 14 inch the model 10-324 no no issues absolutely at all with this bandsaw i was going to shoot a video on setting this one up and I haven't had time to do that. Uh, maybe that will be a video somewhere in the near future. I, once I moved it into this shop, a lot of these tools that I had in the old shop were moved twice. They were moved from the old shop to storage and then moved from storage later to this building here. And I have had to do some adjusting on some of them, but not not it, w it wasn't real bad. We handled them as carefully as we possibly could. Uh, but I did have to do some adjusting on this. Unfortunately, I was in the middle of a project, needed it, and didn't have time to film it. But we'll try to get that done sometime or another. But as far as this bandsaw goes, it is a good bandsaw. It does it does do exactly what it's supposed to do. Absolutely no issues at all. And next to it is my drill press. This is a KNF 16 speed. Uh, had a buddy of mine actually give me this drill press, and it works great. Uh, three, yeah, three quarter horse. The only thing that uh, I don't care for with this drill press, I mean, it, it works great, absolutely no issues at all. But it doesn't have a switch on and off or a variable speed for it. You have to actually raise the hood on it, change the belts, and change to change the speed. But it is 16 speed, it just takes a little bit of work to get it there. 
Well, this is my most used router table. That one up there on the workbench, I do use some. This one is my, my most used one. I built this one. I put T-tracks in the top. The fence, both, well, let me say this fence is a torsion style box. And the fence itself, these gates will open and close only to uh, for bit clearance and also to maximize your uh, suction on your collect dust collection on it. And of course, the fence, the whole fence itself, will pivot and slide back and forth to what you need. And I've got plenty of storage in the bottom of it. And sitting right next to that router table is my oscillating spindle sander. This has been a, a big, big help. Big, it's a big addition to a shop to have one of these because they, they will do so much. And uh, I'm, I'm fortunate and lucky to have this one. This one is a win. And I was not familiar. This is the first win product that I have ever had. And I have had absolutely no issues out of this uh, machine uh, so far. Don't know what all the other ones uh, are like, the rigid and all those. But as far as this one, I can say this machine here has been a pretty decent machine. And actually the dust collection on it, which I have it plumbed over here to the wall, the dust collection on it does very, very well for actually being at the end of the line. In this area at the rear of a shop behind the spindle sander, I have, uh, if you can see, got cars passing outside. But, uh, see this big blue box back here with all the drawers that houses all my hardware paint brushes zip ties clamps air fittings anything of that nature pretty much if it is not something that i frequently use that i have at the front of the shop it's back here and i call this area right here the store and this area right here is where uh, of course you can see my computers and stuff sitting here and all all the paperwork uh, this is where I sit and draw up plans and get quotes and stuff out to a customer or edit video, things of that nature. Of course, in the back corner right back here is my air compressor, and I have a TV up here on the wall. I'm fixing to start in, well, actually next month, January. I'm going to start uh, woodworking classes, and I, I may end up using the TV some for instru doing instructional videos on how-to stuff with the tv i don't know but that's a possibility but i can also stream movies and stuff out here too if i if i need to and next just sitting parked in the back this cart is on wheels this is my milling station it has a, the dewalt dw734 and 735 planers on them and i can roll those up here toward the front of the shop and hook them up on dust collection get them as close to the collection bin as possible and they work very, very well as far as dust collection goes but i uh, also did a video on both of these side by side comparison here a while back if you haven't uh, watched that visit the channel and, and go check those out but i have these mobile to where i can move them around and use them as needed where i need them but more often than not they're right up here to front of the shop when i'm using them and to the rear of the shop i have uh, my refrigerator that is a big blessing as far as having out here in the shop uh extra collection barrel whenever one gets full which this one's full now and i just stuck put that other one in but i have two i can collect 110 gallon of sawdust before i have to empty those uh, in the back corner i have my craftsman toolbox it was actually convenient having that at the front of the shop but i decided to move it back here and get it out of the way because I was continually having to pull it around, push it around, get it out of the way in the front. So I moved it back here. That works out fairly well. And here I have my Delta lathe. It's on a mobile cart also. And I can move it around, but mostly it stays back here. I haven't done a whole lot of turning. I was turning a bowl uh, just a few days ago and I can raise that garage door and take a leaf blower or something and blow the shavings right out. Plus, I've also, this is an addition to the shop. This, uh, I think that's a 42 inch fan, two speed. And of course, I've got the other one that's on a stand. Uh, but I can raise 
that garage door and blow all the dust. Even cleaning this building out, I'll get a leaf blower and just start at the front coming this way, blowing toward this door and letting the fans suck everything out. And that works real, real well. Well, that will do it for this video. I just thought I'd, I'd end the, the year on a, on a shop tour and show you kind of where I, where I was at with the building. Uh, the lumber rack, the clamp rack, and the miter saw station is definitely on the to-do list again next year due to not getting those done this year. And hopefully when I get to build those, I will get those videoed and show you all how I, I've done those two, maybe for some ideas. Uh, on how to do one of your own if that's something that you're you're needing to do but uh until next time thanks for watching